mainly in the North York Moors area. Um, we're up here on the Moors today to look at some damage that's happened to uh, to our Moors. Um, it's mainly damage that's occurred on the peat bogs uh, as a result largely of drainage. Um, there also is quite a lot of damage has occurred in the past through uh, wildfires that have removed vegetation on parts of the woods. The erosion itself uh, leads to many other problems such as the siltation of uh, streams further downstream and the loss of carbon to the atmosphere. Um, the peat bogs in these areas are fantastic peat, peatland resources which are effectively carbon sinks. They sequester carbon which is obviously is a big issue at the moment and we don't want to lose the carbon to the atmosphere. Um, that carbon is currently locked up in the bogs in the peat but as it erodes it gets released back into the environment and the atmosphere. I mean, Pete, lots of people who might be watching this film might use peat uh, if they've got a garden uh, as a uh, as a potting medium, as somebody very involved in the world of peat bogs, what would you say about that? Well, I would ask them really to to go and experiment with other methods. I myself am a keen gardener, and uh, I manage quite ably to rear plants and what have you without uh, resorting to using peat. Uh, the big problem is, regardless of what some uh, commercial interests might uh, try and tell the public, is that peat extraction isn't sustainable. Once the peat's removed from a bog or a moor to be used in horticulture or for any other purposes, it can't be replaced. It takes at least a thousand years for a peat bog to grow by a metre. Um, so clearly where it's been removed on an industrial scale uh, there's no chance that it's ever going to be replaced um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say you know for everyone's good we've got to cut down on its usage to the point where hopefully we can do without it and let the uh, peat bogs return to their natural state there are alternatives to using peat and um, I think it's in everyone's interest that we cut down on its usage. There is um, an intention that it will be legislated against ultimately and um, peat extraction might either be voluntarily or by legislation be uh, halted in the UK. Uh, there is a problem behind this in that um, Many of those commercial interests will have threatened to simply switch their uh, um, sourcing of peat to uh, countries abroad, which, you know, in terms of helping the planet sequester carbon, is just as bad as taking it from British peatlands. So, really, we'd uh, like to see it stopped altogether. And the thing about peat is Unlike so many other resources like uh, fossil fuels and that, there's not much argument that we really need it. It's it's been well proven that we can garden without peat. Indeed, you know most people did manage to garden without peat until probably the post Second World War era, when uh, when when transport became such that it was uh, viable to to move great big quantities of peat around to garden centres and such. Most people manage with the manures and everything else which are still available. So I would certainly say please think twice about it. Source out, source out the non-peat products if you've got to use um, uh, bark products to raise plants in. Source out the non-peat products and um, and really we need to give a message to the to the big combines that uh, we don't want to buy peat anymore, so they'll have to stop producing it then. Thanks for that. Let's go and have a look at the uh, on the moors here and see what the problems are that you're working hard to overcome. To the left of this gully, there's an area that the National Park had some um, 
a pilot scheme of uh, peatland restoration done on and um, a company from Skipton actually did some grip blocking up on the left uh, about five years ago which has been quite successful unfortunately because it was a pilot scheme and funding at the time was a bit limited some of these bigger gullies downstream were left um, really and although the erosion has as you can see um, been reduced because there's a lot less water flowing down it now um, the scarring still remains so we're going to put in just a few more dams and try and revegetate the bare peat area but that sort of gullying is very typical of uh, places where the drainage has gone wrong it's a real scar isn't it yeah it's horrid you know it's uh, really and it is to be honest quite a small one compared to what that we've seen yeah 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 so you'd never you'd never be able to bring in any materials to fill these scars that would never be thought of as it, firstly there would be a cost issue and secondly getting it here we're in a very remote spot and thirdly to get the right kind of materials you'd probably have to dig up some other people yeah. and yeah and <laughs> and damage yeah. that so yeah. it yeah it's not particularly feasible the hope is that we'll that once revegetated it will heal itself over many many decades right if not probably a scar that size it'll take a few centuries um, or at least if the scar doesn't heal it will be vegetated and not eroded anymore it's man made because it's pretty straight and it looks at this stage quite innocuous um, the problems begin to arise when uh, when the grip goes over the slope and the gradient increases and uh, and where the water accelerates down the slope we start to get a lot more erosion Just give us, a, just tell us why um, you know they would have been um, these grips would have been put in. Why drain them all then? The reason they were put in was, uh, I think, ostensibly back then was to probably improve the grazing. Um, also, as a consequence, it was realised that uh, if you dried the, uh, particularly the bog areas out, you'd probably get more heather, which uh, is a uh, habitat that uh, red grouse favour and it's actually their main food source uh, so quite a lot of uh, of this upland drainage did occur during the 1950s 60s and 70s and uh, at the time it appeared beneficial for um, for farming and uh, for grouse shooting but uh, in the end we're now finding that uh, some unforeseen consequences have arisen and uh, those consequences are mainly that uh, these grips get terribly eroded and start to uh, take the peat away, um, which we can uh, probably show you if we wander across the moor and have a look for some more of them. When we come across these grips, the best thing to do with them to stop the erosion, which we're going to show you later, is to block the grips while they're still small. Um, and we do that ordinarily by uh, getting the contractors to construct peat dams which are small dams made of peat excavated from beside the grip and um, slotted into the to grip at, at intervals of probably 8 to 10 metres to slow the flow of the water and retain, retain the peat behind them and ultimately uh, to promote the revegetation of that grip. Now, on occasions, and particularly on the North York Moors, sometimes the peat isn't deep enough to construct dams from the peat itself, so we have to use other means, um, other materials to uh, make the dams. In this case, we're probably going to make them out of um, 
heather bales. So the heather <coughs> will be mown from areas adjacent to the grips and made into small heather bales and they will be put in in place of the peat dams and hopefully that will achieve the same uh, effect of uh, filtering the peat that's moving downwards downstream and depositing it behind the dams so that the vegetation can uh, start get a chance to grow again. So on a, on, a, on a small channel like this, which we were talking about, possibly one foot wide uh -huh. uh, at, at most, how quickly could you see a really positive effect of putting in? Um, it, it probably depends on the amount of rainfall and actually the amount of sphagnum moss in the environment. Um, I, we've seen them uh, in the North Pennines, in uh, Cumbria and Northumberland, actually be filled with vegetation within less than a year. It hasn't become solid ground, it's still full of cotton grasses and sphagnum, um, but but the appearance of the grip has changed such that it looks more like level ground in that space of time and it really depends on, uh, on rainfall um, and the, the surrounding vegetation type that exists already. Um, at another site we've done recently, the vegetation uh, on, on the North York Mers, the vegetation there has uh, started to reappear in probably six months or so, but it's the, the grip itself is still discernible. Um, and uh, it will, in all honesty, be uh, several decades before it returns to anything like solid ground. Of course, peat bog isn't actually solid ground anyway, but um, the benefits of, of this revegetation are that uh, sheep won't get stuck in them and no will grouse chicks fall into them and get trapped and uh, separated from the mothers. So actually blocking them should be beneficial to uh, farmers and to the uh, grouse mow managers as well. So we have walked about uh, 20 metres from where the grip was about a foot deep and a foot wide and the gradient is just beginning to increase as we uh, come across the side of the hill and so already we're beginning to see how much uh, quicker the erosion takes effect so the uh, the waters as in most watercourses is obviously cutting down through it but channel is beginning to widen as well. As it cuts down the sides collapse and then in times of heavy rainfall um, all that peat that's collapsed into the uh, grip or the gully is washed away and downstream into into becks and streams and ultimately into rivers or oh, reservoirs actually um, and it's either washed away or it, uh, it's contaminating drinking water in the case of reservoirs. But it gets worse the steeper the slope on any, um, or the, the more the gradient is on any slope. What would the depth of the peat be in an area like this? I mean, would we be get, getting close to the mineral layer here? Um, probably. We should see some downstream uh, where the mineral layer, i.e., the rocks and that have been exposed. Um, Typically on the North Yotmers we get uh, peat depths on the bogs of between half a metre and probably about four metres. The deepest known bog on the North Yotmers is around about up to six metres. Um, there are places in Britain where it's substantially more than that. Um, but around here I think we're probably looking at two or three metres deep and, uh, and this grip has already got eroded. Uh, through about a metre and a half depth, um, so very soon is likely to be down to the uh, mineral there. So here you'd be definitely putting the heather bales in here at yes, this point, um, would you? Yes, as the gullies get bigger on uh, on this type of uh, gully we'd probably be looking at using large bales, probably round bales, um, to construct dams with to try and retain some water and, and definitely to retain the peat. 
I, I, I would say as well that in some situations where um, if it's possible we, um, we can use dams made out of timber so you might see dams made out of timber in some places. How, how big a project is this? What are you looking at in terms of the, the times that you're going to have to, to work on this? On this particular yeah. site? Um, this work, uh, it's November now, will have to be done by the end of March, by the uh, start of the bird breeding season. We're not allowed to, and we don't want to, do any ground works once um, birds start to uh, pair up and mate. We've come about another 40 or 50 metres down this slope, and already the uh, erosion is even more obvious. Uh, and the, the gully has now uh, become eroded to something like uh, three and a half metres wide and a good metre and a half deep. And uh, to the steepest part of the slope. Uh, but it is very um, telling that the damage that's done with the water has eroded now through the peat layer and we've reached the mineral layer. So the rocks are exposed. Um, and so uh, the water that's carrying material is not only carrying peat now, it is actually taking silt which will end up in a stream and ultimately in a river and uh, really it won't be uh, doing those watercourses any favours either because there will be silt in them up and we could avoid a lot of this by actually stopping or reducing the drainage from these, which is the aim of our project, is to dam these. One of the problems we do have, once the gully has been allowed to erode to this size, is um, is building an effective dam. It's obviously a lot easier to build a dam in a small grip before it gets eroded to this stage, and sealing it makes sure less water escapes. Once it's got to this size, um, and the mineral layer has been exposed, it's much more difficult to uh, seal it. And it's true to say, I think, that uh, the methodology is being used now to um, block crypts and gullies of this size are still somewhat experimental, and still trying to uh, really um, evolve the methods and, 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 and improve them all the time. What we're proposing to do on this site is um, build dams here made from large bales, large round bales of heather, which will block the uh, watercourse. Then we'll use peat and other materials, perhaps a few turfs, to try and seal the edges because you've got to seal it all. If you leave gaps, the water continues to erode underneath and the erosion continues, or you can get erosion around the sides. So it is important to try and get a seal. Um, our expectation is that not all of them will work uh, completely, and so we might have to do some maintenance on them. And also, that's the reason, one reason, why we put them so frequently. We don't just put one big dam at the bottom or just several dams up here. We've got to put them every eight, ten, or even if the gradients. Uh, sufficiently steep even at five meter intervals to try and slow it down and also to take account of the fact that you might get the odd failure um, or one that isn't working 100 percent but the total effect of all the dams should be to slow up the flow of water considerably here we are in another gully just a few meters away from the last one and uh, is even worse. So the uh, water in the original grip, and you can you can tell it's man-made because it's such a straight water course. But the original grip has now eroded from a small grip that size some decades ago when it was constructed into this big gaping gully. And there's actually no signs of the erosion stopping naturally. We have had a little bit of collapse of. Uh, the sides in and uh, there is some vegetation on it but uh, quite often these sort of collapses will get washed away again and uh, obviously it will just make the gully even wider 
but in terms of the bottom of the gully now it's quite obvious on this one that uh, the water's eroded completely through the peat layer through quite a lot of the mineral there, i.e. the sandy subsoil, uh, sandy clay subsoil if you like and we're into the mineral layer proper um, not so very far off the bedrock to be honest and uh, really all that's going to happen here is that this uh, gully if it's left um, without any restoration it will probably begin to meander and it will get ever wider and um, the consequence that we can see ultimately is that these grips that are probably 50 metres apart now will actually get ever closer and will start losing land um, our ground will start to um, move away in big chunks and we have seen that happen on some sites. Looking across the North Yorkshire Moors in general, what's the sort of overview picture of what's happening? Well there are um, there are several areas where there have been uh, uh, quite serious damage to the peatlands and um, they're dotted about across the North Yorkshire Moors. Most of the, the best bogs were across the central area and it's there that uh, you could probably find most damage if you look for it. It hasn't got to the stage that uh, perhaps t two or three other areas in Britain have where uh, it's quite obvious uh, to people even walking or driving in a certain area that there's something going badly wrong. I'm talking about the Peak District and so on where the damage is even worse but um, the Peak District serves to illustrate to us that are in peatland restoration that we must let that happen to the rest of the peat bogs in the country um, so the damage is bad enough uh, at the moment it is a bit more isolated um, but where it is occurring obviously it's quite serious um, and there are several areas on the North Yorkmans where as a result of drainage that's gone wrong like this are often uh, serious wildfires as well where the vegetation has been burnt off and the peat has been burnt to a fair extent um, those areas having lost their vegetation become very open to er erosion by uh, mainly by water but also by wind and what have you so that's another serious problem that we have and there are several areas on the north of Mars where that's been happening and uh, we're trying to address those as well. And when you say we, this is the Yorkshire Peat Partnership? It's the it? Yorkshire Peat Partnership, which is a, a partnership um, founded some two and a half years ago, uh, really to amalgamate the efforts of um, both of Yorkshire's national parks, the Yorkshire Dales National Park and this one, the North Yorkshire Moors National Park, and to um, bring in uh, expertise from or being well we can stop this collapse and at the very least stop it getting any worse and I say in luck in time if we get silt and peat deposited behind the dams um, we may get vegetation growing and eventually over many many probably decades we might get see these gullies becoming more shallow again It must be enormously rewarding work for you because, I mean, when you plant a tree, you know, it's fairly long term. But for here, although you're talking about decades, you're also saying that within a, you know, two, three, four years, you should be able to see a, a bit of a difference. Yes, we, uh, on some, some areas, on some types of restoration, we've seen results where we, we can see that it looks as though they're going to work within even the space of a year, probably. So it's very rewarding. And... And I think knowing that we've um, installed these works that are going to hopefully pay dividends over many decades is it's a nice thought that we're leaving a legacy and uh, we're fixing something rather than, uh, than destroying anything. Um, so it is, it is very rewarding.